Are you struggling to blend out color pencils? Then you clicked on the right video. My name is Drago Sepina and in today's video I'm going to show you 4 easy ways to blend out color pencils. I know it can be hard, trust me, but in today's video you are going to see how easy and fast can it be. Now let's pick up the pencils and get started. The first way is layering. What is layering? Layering is a gradual buildup of light and dark values and requires several applications before the desired result is achieved. Usually the first application of color will cover the largest area. Each subsequent application of color should be smaller, staying within the perimeter of the first color. This is the blending method we all start with. It's the easiest one and requires no additional materials. In the demonstration I use a very textured paper, that's why you can see those white gaps. They indicate the texture of the paper. Now let's see some tips in applying this method. First of all, the pencil should be kept as far as possible from the tip. Secondly, the pressure should be light and even. This will keep away unwanted pencil marks. Another important tip will be working in layers from light to dark. By doing this, you will have time for corrections and stop when you have reached the desired tone. If you apply a heavy hand the first time, it will be very hard to correct and the texture of the paper will definitely fill in, leaving no more room for other marks. To be frank, this is my least favorite way of blending. To show you how layering would look on a subject, I'll draw this tulip using this way. Again, I use a very textured paper, that's why the texture is still visible. On a smooth paper, it would look completely different. It's best to work in portions, at least in my case, to focus your attention only on that particular area. The pencils used are Prismacolor. I pick up these pencils for their creamy texture, great for blending. By applying all the tips mentioned previously, I rendered the tulip as realistic as possible. The second method is burnishing. Burnishing involves layering and blending until no paper tooth shows through the colored pencil layers. This technique is most often used for drawing skin. Unlike the previous way, it requires a very hard pressure. All those gaps must be entirely covered for a finer effect. To achieve this effect, you need to hold the pencil as close as possible to the tip. This will enhance the precision and control of the pencil. If you hold the pencil towards the end, you will find that you cannot apply sufficient pressure to push the pigment into the paper. This method is very time consuming and tires the hand very quickly because of the high pressure on the pencil. I advise you to take breaks when your wrist starts to hurt, as continuing to draw with pain will endure your wrist. As I always recommend, apply the pencil from light to dark, burnishing every layer, the dark color into the light one and vice versa. As I think you have already figured out, I will draw a flower for each blending technique. I drew each petal at a time, starting with a very high pressure to cover the entire texture of the paper to create a base layer. The second color I used was a very bright red, which was also my mid-tone color. To blend and burnish it, I used the preceding color, a light pink that I used as a base layer. The most recommended would be to use a brown instead of the black, but I really wanted to achieve a very strong contrast for the rose to stand out and be more lifelike. I didn't burnish the black to preserve the color as pure as possible. If I had used red, it would have turned into a purple color. At the end of each petal, I added a highlight using a white pencil. The stem was done using the exact same techniques. The method number 3 is using a white pencil. This is the same as the previous one, the only difference is the usage of a white pencil instead of colors. To begin the burnishing process, a layer of color pencil must be first added, otherwise there will be nothing to burnish. As opposed to the previous method, this will lighten up the colors and more layers will need to be added to get the vibrancy of the color you want. If you want to avoid this, you can as well use a colorless blender. This is an achromatic pencil that will push the pigment into the paper without changing its color. Normally this flower should have been a daisy, but it turned out purple, that's why I will call it a purple daisy. This happened because the pigment of the black color opened up and turned out purple as it came into contact with the white pencil and burnished it. For this technique, it is possible to use any white pencil but preferably a wax-based one, as the core is much creamier and easily blendable. For the stamen, I used the bright yellow which I burnished, 
then drew some lines over it to create some texture and then I used a red pencil for darkening it up. To create the petals, I applied the black pencil, then burnished it out using the white pencil. To add more dimension and texture, I added some very fine lines with the black pencil. The stem was done very quickly, as I tried to keep it as simple as possible. The last burnishing technique is using a solvent. A solvent is a substance which makes other materials dissolve to form a solution. Basically, it breaks down the pencil pigment and turns it into a watercolor-like texture. I am using the color pencil solvent from Zested, but since it is not easy accessible, rubbing alcohol, odorless mineral spirits and turpentine can be used as well. For this method you need some synthetic brushes as well. They are particularly good because they have very stiff bristles, helping the liquid to spread better. An important tip is not to add too much liquid on the brush to avoid fluting the texture of the paper. To avoid this, soak the brush in a piece of tissue paper to remove the excess. The use of a proper paper should be kept in mind as well. It is best to use a watercolor paper as it is special made for wet mediums. Simply add a layer of pencil and apply the solvent. This process is done for each layer of pencil. When I created the sunflower it felt like painting in watercolors. It was very relaxing and enjoyable. Some solvents can have a very strong odor so I recommend that you inform yourself well before purchasing it. To create the petals I added a layer of pencil, shortly followed by liquidizing them. To build up the contrast I added a touch of orange and repeated the process. For the middle part, the part containing the seeds, I used the brown color. I applied it twice to blacken the area. Remember to wait a few minutes in between the layers for the solvent to dry out. After liquidizing the pencil, I used a black and white pencil to add the details, making sure they were very sharp beforehand. I really wanted to make it look like it had seeds. The thing I love the most about the solvent is how easily highlights and other colors can be added over. As seen in my demonstration, the details can be seen right away without much effort. The leaves and the stem don't have as much detail as the rest, which is why I only applied two layers of green and added some details with a darker shade of green and white. Now we came to an end of the video. I really hope you enjoyed it and you've learned a lot from it. I am posting one time a week and normally graphite, colored pencil or pastel related videos. So if you don't want to miss any of those, please hit that subscribe button and the bell button as well to be notified every time a video goes live. And I really hope I'm going to see you in the next one as well. Have a nice day. Bye guys.